Hey traders, this is Paul Robinson here at Daily FX. Welcome to Friday's session of London FX and CFD trading. Hey, how's it going, Mike? Bill? What's going on, guys? Uh, before we get started, a couple things. One, I want to just make sure you guys can hear me loud and clear. You can see my screen. You should see a risk disclaimer. Perfect. Thank you, Steve, Bill, Mike, everybody, Luis. Uh, all right, so risk disclaimers, give yourself 10, 15 seconds, and we will get started. Oh, yeah, they're really whacking. Kiwi yen, huh? All right, we'll start out with the euro today. Usually we look at the dollar index, but let's look at the, uh, let's start out with the euro. Whoops. It's been doing that. I think I got to restart my browser flashing. Maybe it's a sign. Uh, the euro. All right, so the euro. This this head and shoulders we talked about the other day, the one that, that everybody, uh, so focused on self included after we had that breakdown uh, is in the process of being negated there's still a small small possibility that the euro does still decline from here I think that I think that that's at this point this this topping pattern is certainly uh, being put to full test and I, I'm I'm not the the confidence level now is is has diminished to to single digit odds I give it uh, of actually uh, seeing us really roll over uh, at least in the in the very short term. The other day we did have when we were on here on Wednesday we were we were trading up here towards resistance. We did have a nice little pin bar. Uh, taking that into context though. With what we're what we're seeing here is we're seeing that that break. Uh, I may have to restart this here in a second. Don't want to have to do that, but may have to. Uh, we've got this trend line coming down off the high, right off the head, over the right shoulder. Clearly broken the other day uh, with quite a bit of force in the process. We broke the back above the neckline, uh, as you can see from my little little drawing here. Uh, this is kind of the kind of the path that I'm I'm thinking about. Uh, I, I would say that that if if the euro uh, if if the euro is to uh, to move higher, I I would have a hard time thinking that it's it's going to be able to do such uh, if it breaks down below 117 again. So this to me, you know, we got this breakout above the trend line. You've got a clear break above the technical neckline, but then you've also got some nice horizontal uh, support in here. Uh, it, it was resistance. Uh, now I, I think that if this is going to play out uh, and we are going to get a move to the top side, that it can't move really below 117. Uh, if it does, then we could be in for that, – that could bring everything back into play. Uh, if you look at this from a trend standpoint, we've got a high, a low, a lower high. You know what? I may have to restart my uh, my browser. I'm going to restart it in another window while I'm going through this because I don't want to have that keep flashing. And uh, so bear with me. I do apologize. Uh, it's not wanting to uh, cooperate here. Um, I, I think that from a trend standpoint still, you've got a lower high, lower low, a lower high, uh, but given the fact that this pattern is, is really come under fire, uh, kind of, uh, I'm just going to make a switch here real quick while I've got another browser up so this way we can uh, not have the situation. Bear with me for one moment while I make that switch. I think it would be rather annoying to go through the whole webinar trying to uh, to get through that uh, flashing. And there 
we go. All right. So we're back in play. We're back in play. My apologies. All right. So uh, train of thought. Let's see if I can regain it. Okay. Broke back above the neckline. Uh, again, this 117 is a real big area here. Uh, as as is so is the level near 119. All right. So we've got a couple of we got a we got a band here. We got a, a, a zone here where we've got good support. It comes in around say 117 and a quarter down to about 117. Then we've got some really good resistance. You can see there was a lot of play around this area, uh, which was the 2010 low. So even though that was what seems like eons ago, uh, you can see that its influence is being felt. Uh, and even the other day, uh, we had that reversal that came just shy of there. So there's there's clearly uh, there's clearly some selling activity uh, the, up in that area, and I think that you know again, if we're going to move higher, uh, 117, we do need to get above this resistance here. It is it is going to be resistance until not, uh, and if we do, you know, I think it's very possible that this overall price action here uh, was just corrective, and that we could end up. Uh, getting a, a a much broader move higher, uh, perhaps maybe the euro will be uh, will want to finish the year out on a on a high note. Then in that case, uh, we've only got what five six weeks left. Uh, unbelievable, the year goes by so fast, doesn't it? Uh, so right now it, we're kind of caught between a, a, a rock and a and a hard spot in terms of uh, you know real real clarity here. Uh, which seems to be the case in a couple of these. Uh, again, we talked about this uh, yesterday in the Becoming a Better Trader webinar. We were talking about uh, this this horizontal price action, and the uh, there there really isn't a lot of there's not a lot of edge uh, when you're when you're trading in the middle of a range. Uh, clearly, support has been been holding. Uh, important support has is, is become more important because it's holding and now we're getting to bounce up. Uh, but we do have some pretty good resistance up here in the 133 area. Uh, so, you know, again, we, we could get up here and then we could get dinked back down. Uh, for those who like to trade ranges, you know, watching how the uh, how price action plays out in this 133 up to, say, 133.40, how it plays out there. Uh, may be of interest in terms of uh, looking for a turn back down uh, for for a, a range type uh, trade. Uh, at some point, this will resolve itself. Uh, it could take out a little while before it does. It's quite possible, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, that as the more I move out, uh, we're, we're getting into December, so uh, it's possible it could take out to that point before we do get a resolution. So I, I take a very uh, neutral approach to to cable. Uh, support is holding very well here. Uh, it's still continue to think that there's a chance that it's we're going to get a continuation off that that spike high move down. Uh, but again, you know that really won't come into play until we we get below all the support, right? So we have trend line coming here, a trend line coming from here, uh, which is actually tied to this upper slope. And then we've got these lows, so there's a lot of you know, really we got to get below 130 for for that continuation style trade to come into play. Uh, so I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm certainly not going to try to uh, be Nostradamus here and predict that that's going to happen. Uh, and so I'm just going to uh, to, to kind of hang low in the uh, cable until we get uh, a little better clarity. Now, dollar yen is something that we've been talking about. It's having a path of least resistance lower. Uh, I continue to uh, to operate within that construct. Uh, if you would look at the four-hour chart, so we had our we had our wedge break, and then we've got our sequence of lower lows, uh, lower highs, right? Low, lower high. Even if you want to go back here. It, it, it all began uh, off this top here. You've got you know, a sequence here that's that's pretty firmly entrenched. And when we take and we draw the trend lines, the parallels of one another. All right. So this is this is just the same line as this, just taken down below. Uh, we can see that we've got 
you know, it's it's trading it's trading well within this channel. So as long as it's trading inside this channel, uh, at least below the top side portion, it could get down below here uh, since the trend is moving in that direction. Uh, then the the outlook remains uh, remains bearish for dollar yen, uh, and you know this is really to me the next swing low that I'm looking at uh, around this. 111.65, 111.70 ish uh, area. Uh, we've seen already that this lower parallel has acted as support. Uh, we're down there near there now. Uh, we could get a bounce, but whenever the way that I treat these, whenever we have a, a channel forming in something, the way that I like to treat it is that. Uh, the lower, if it were trending lower, the lower parallel is more of a uh, a spot to look for the market to bounce from from a from a covering standpoint. If you're short, uh, it's not necessarily a to me a, 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 the best spot to look for a long, uh, just because the trend is is going in that direction. And then I look to the the upper trend lines as being uh, more substantial in the terms of resistance. Uh, so. You know that's that's kind of how you can work uh, within the confines of a of a channel. Uh, you know, you look at the direction of the trend and then and then go from there. But we could see down here where that support. We were just looking at the four hour. We've also got the 200 that that kind of neatly comes into play there. It actually was right around uh, the, the very worst close we had on this particular dip. Uh, so. I think that you know when we get down there, that'll become a, an important spot to watch and see how momentum is playing out. It's also it's been support for a very long time, and even resistance in a couple of instances. But it's been a support area for quite some time. I mean, it was going all the way back to to November of last year. Uh, so really, this is the next big area of support, and and I think that you know when you look to the left, you know there's really not a lot keeping it. Uh, from getting down to that point, uh, it, we're we're seeing we're seeing some pretty good yen strength across the board, and we'll look at those cross rates here uh, in in a minute. Uh, dollar CAD. So later today, we've got some we've got some inflation data uh, coming out. I think what 1:30 GMT time. I think I think it's 1:30. Have to look again. Uh, so that could be that could be very important potentially for this this trend line. Uh, I don't really, you know, again, I don't I don't really I don't really care about the specifics of the data. For those of you who know uh, my approach on things, uh, but certainly you know that can be stuff that that moves the market. This this trend line is really uh, is really being tested here uh, with uh, with with dollar CAD. Now we've got a nice trend line. Uh, we've got a nice trend line coming off the low, though. All right. So we've we've talked about this. We'll actually look at the four hour. We we do have a nice trend line, and we've got you know it begins here, and then we had during a very short span of time we had some nice little reversals off of it. Uh, the market clearly responded uh, to support there. It's clearly responded there. It's trying to respond right now, right today, last night, into today. So it, it, it's it's holding, but we can see that it's it's starting to get to be one of those things where it's getting tested repeatedly. Uh, and if we see that the dollar is is going to weaken uh, materially, uh, that that this probably won't hold. Uh, is, is the thinking, uh, and we can also take a little line and draw it through here, and we can connect these little points. But anytime you get a trend line, anytime you get a trend line that's that's getting tested within such short order, and and uh, you've got price action just kind of riding here, it's it's very important for it to to, to push away from it soon, uh, because the longer it sits there, the more likely it is. Uh, to be broken, you know, it's it's kind of you know, think about uh, it's basically like the market's uh, kind of hammering away, if you will, uh, and, and as you hammer away at the foundation, it it gets weaker and weaker, and then 
uh, and then eventually it doesn't take much break it so it could happen today and uh, we could either validate this uh, we do have going back to the four hour uh, and there's always a possibility here that we've got a uh, an inverse head and shoulders appearing here uh, with the right shoulder coming right at that trend line so if we're going to hold this and validate it and break this uh, the neckline then so left shoulder head right shoulder neckline uh, then you know today really is kind of getting to that point where you know we in early very early next week at the latest where we we need to make a we need to make a decision here so I think that you know either dollar cad is going to start to respond to that trend line again and push forward uh, in that case then uh, we could we could see a resumption of the trend if it fails uh, which is which is starting to look like the more likely uh, scenario although again it's it's still support until it's not then you know I could see us I could see us getting another another leg down maybe towards these tops here uh, under 126 and maybe even worse uh, we've got the 2012 uh, and we'll go back and look at it here just so that we can uh, put it into context of where it's We've got this 2012 trend line, which had a lot of points of inflection. Then there was a huge gap, and there was no problem breaking through it. We recaptured it. We used it as support over here. So if this trend line does break, and we do get a lower low, below the uh, monthly low at 126, what 67, I believe. Uh, 65 67 who's counting pips uh, then we do have some tops over here that they could hold up but it would really I think that probably the 125 area and a retest of this uh, 2012 trend line would, would come into play uh, so this needs to hold really really soon uh, or else else it could uh, it, it could uh, roll over and, and roll over with some vigor uh, and, and since we are seeing the dollar generally strengthen uh, against a lot of other currencies that would make sense but again I want to see it I want to see it actually close below the trend line uh, on a daily basis and then before rolling with that because you know, as we've seen here uh, like today for example we've already kind of dipped below it uh, and holding and perhaps later today those numbers that come out could be uh, something uh, to keep an eye on uh, in terms of, of validating or invalidating that now Aussie Aussie is is really making an attempt here to break below an important trend line going back to December so on approach right it was support and as we were talking about yesterday momentum uh, momentum coming into this trend line had not really turned up uh, and so it, for for those who have been short holding into a, a support area uh, when momentum is is still kind of favorable uh, is not a is not a terrible idea uh, it's actually I, I do it quite often and with that said then maybe you get a possible break I think that this break here uh, if it holds and we don't get a reversal now if we got a reversal then I think it would be and we close back above this trend line then it would be caution for the shorts I think then it would be one of those things where okay you know what we got to move into support it held uh, and and it held uh, and, and that would be something uh, that we would want to take into consideration uh, for from you know the standpoint of not wanting to be overly uh, not overly bearish doesn't necessarily give a great uh, bullish signal given the fact that the trend has been very very weak uh, but it certainly uh, it certainly could bring into the possibility of a bounce now if we do close today and we do close below there then the target becomes this area around 75 under 75 and that's a trend line going all the way back to January of last year. Very big pivots, right? This was a huge low. This was a this was a massive low coming all the way from this peak up here in 2014. It was a very big low in 2016, 
And so if we can close down here today, uh, looking for that, that say 7480 area uh, is the next targeted uh, support zone. Kiwi, Kiwi making the lower low right now. Uh, bounced off of this the support, making the lower low, similar to Aussie, unsurprisingly. Uh, we get a close below there. We really don't have, you, know, you look at this, this space here. I'll get to, uh, hey Mike, I'll get to, uh, I'll cover Euro Sterling since you asked about it. I wasn't going to cover it unless somebody asked. You asked, so I'll cover it. Once I get to through some of these other rates. Uh, if we look here, right, you don't really see anything in terms of support. So we've got some open space all the way down to this trend line. And this trend line also could coincide with this swing here. So looking to the left, we close below this swing low back here in May. We've got nothing. Right? It doesn't mean that we'll necessarily, uh, we'll necessarily see a, a straight line move down. Uh, but it does present a a path of uh, to operate off of. You know, if there's a there's a rally and it starts to fail, you start to see something on the four hour. Uh, then you know, maybe the hourly. Uh, you know, you can you can maybe look to take entries from the short side. This would just you know getting that daily close would at least open up the path uh, for continued weakness for about another 100 110 points. Uh, lower, uh, so that's something that I'm certainly uh, you know waiting to see today. This would be important. It's also would be the end of the week, so we'd have a nice weekly close below those swing lows. Uh, Darren, I would Darren ask about what would be a stop uh, on this particular position. Uh, personally, you know, if we got this close today, if we got a if we got a close back above. So this is support right now, right? And it's being broken. So as we always talk about, old support becomes new resistance. And we've also got this trend line. It's a very steep trend line coming down here. So if we do get this close today, now if we were to reverse, that would be, you know, to me, that would be something that would take this off the table for now. But if we do get this close today, to me, using this as resistance and then looking at this trend line, you know, you'd want to you'd want to at least see it get back above uh, this sub old support new resistance area. So with that in mind, you know a stop above there, uh, sufficiently above there, because you could get a bounce back up into this area and then it could reverse. Uh, but if if we don't get back above there, then you know that keeps this in play. So I think a stop sufficiently above there is a is a prudent way to. Uh, to take advantage of further momentum, especially if you've been short this thing from, you know, maybe you've been short this thing from from really good levels. Uh, so then you don't mind uh, putting a putting a stop up here a little bit higher even uh, to give it some wiggle room. It is Kiwi. Kiwi is notorious for having uh, uh, some sharp retracements, uh, and they may only even last a half a day before failing. But nevertheless, Kiwi can be a bit of a a jitterbug. Uh, so, with that said, uh, you know you've got a you got a. I think with this particular uh, currency, you've you've really got to you know if you're going to put your stop one. I, this is what I always think to myself. If I were to say put my stop just above this this trend line and, and outside of you know back back above here, and if I were to put it 68.50, me. I would move it up even more uh, in this particular one, just because because I know that it can be uh, it can be one of those that that certainly will test the will uh, of of the market. Um, let's see. Let's go to dollar Swiss. Dollar Swiss. I think the dollar Swiss is you know we've got this channel that was operating in had a nice nice up move. It's outside of it now. Uh, if we go to the four hour, the four hour presents us with a couple of situations. Uh, you know, it seems like wherever I move that, it always wants to come back to where I want to go. Uh, I think right here, looking at dollar Swiss, you know, you've got 
we had this this break of this top drop lower high lower low we've got a trend line coming down here so as long as dollar swiss stays really below the swing high here um, I think that the dollar Swiss is, is, you know, the benefit of the doubt is with the bears, you've got that, you know, again, we've got that channel break uh, that we're just looking at on the daily and there's that trend line. So we broke that trend line. We're starting a bear sequence. Uh, and with that said, uh, if this is going to continue on lower, uh, the area that I'm looking at is, is around this 98 line. Uh, we've got you know, some clear inflection points and then we've, you can see the, the 200 day has almost gone perfectly sideways with this particular area as well. Uh, so I would imagine there would be some support down in here. So if this is going to continue on lower, this is the this is the targeted area about 100 points lower. And again, if it gets back above, it uh, doesn't necessarily mean that, that dollar Swiss is going to, uh, if it gets back above that, this swing high here, uh, that's developing. It doesn't necessarily mean that dollar Swiss is in the clear and going to start rallying again, uh, but just taking it one step at a time from a short-term standpoint, this this high here uh, should hold on a closing basis uh, in this trend line if it's if it's going to head lower in the near term. Uh, let's see. Let's go and look at we looked at uh, we looked at the dollar pairs. Let's look at all right. Let's look at euro sterling since somebody mentioned it. Um, I wasn't going to look at it because it's just a favorite of mine. Uh, some people love it. I happen to be in that camp that doesn't. <laughs> Nothing wrong with trading it though. All right, so here's what we got. Very nice reversal bar the other day at resistance. Very nice. It's a nice pin bar. Uh, I do like these types of pin bars. I like them when they don't when they occur in other things not called euro sterling. Uh, but nevertheless, very nice uh, reversal day uh, along with the euro. And of course now we're seeing the euro you know, soften a little bit or or just kind of neutral, and we're seeing uh, sterling rally. Uh, so that's that's how we're getting this situation right now. Uh, looking to if this so right now what we've got is just kind of a big range developing uh, it, which is not really that surprising given the nature of this particular currency but if we're gonna if we're gonna sell off here you know this is an area that I'd be looking at uh, it, we do have this trend line we broke uh, we've got this trend line which is even more important uh, we've got this trend line coming back here Right, that goes all the way back to, to May of last year. Uh, so I think this would be, and then you've got the 200 kind of lining up with it. Uh, lately, I've been noticing a lot of trend lines lining up with the uh, the 200, like in gold, for example, as well as is, is another one. I've been noticing they've been lining up. It doesn't always happen like that. It doesn't, in fact, it doesn't seem to happen in so many different uh, markets at one time uh, as they have recently. So I feel like I've been talking about the 200 a lot lately and for anybody who hasn't been following me for very long, you'd probably think that the 200 is my is one of my favorite things to look at and it's not. Uh, it just happens to be that it's lining up with a lot of things. And we can see even over here, the 200 was influential, right? And it lined up with support over here. Uh, it, was, it was definitely influential. We tried to break. We had all the support down here. We had a little reversal. Uh, and then a big pop on, uh, on uh, I think that was the BOE day. Uh, so again, you got that 200 kind of lining up in here uh, with support, just like we were looking at with Dollar Swiss a minute ago. So whenever I see the, uh, whenever I see very, very key moving averages uh, line up with support and resistance, then I'll just kind of add that into the support and resistance column as, as giving it a little bit more strength. Uh, but I don't look at the 200 per se by itself. Uh, I, I don't say okay, well, what 200 day or, or whatever, and and, uh, and so therefore it's it should bounce. Uh, but if it does line up with horizontal levels, you know, I find that to be intriguing. Uh, and after all, moving average is based on price, so you know you are going to get times when there is going to be confluence between a lot of price levels and the moving average, especially when you know really we haven't gone anywhere. Uh, we haven't gone anywhere in months. Uh, in euro sterling, when you go net net, if you uh, took a little hiatus and were on a 
deserted island by yourself, uh, <laughs> and you and you left in July, right at this time, and you and you came back, you, and you were long or short, you'd be disappointed to know that your position hadn't hadn't quote unquote moved. <laughs> Uh, so you know that's what happens with with uh, you know, and I think that's that's the reason why we're seeing the 200-day uh, come into play with a lot of different markets at at key levels is because uh, really the volatility has been low, uh, something that we've talked about, uh, and I don't even need to talk about it for you to know the volatility is low because the trading opportunities have been uh, been limited. Uh, and even like, for example, you look at euro volatility, uh, implied volatility on a one-month basis recently, uh, earlier this month, was at the lowest level since 2014. Right? It was it was down in a, in a five handle. Uh, the lows in 2014 before the big the big dollar move uh, was like in, in the in the four percent area. Uh, so it, it, we certainly got down to some pretty pretty big extremes, which is also the the positive I think is volatility is is mean reverting, right? And we've gone through a pretty extended period of, of low volatility. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of I've seen a lot of statistics put out on say the stock market and some of the unprecedentedly low volatility uh, that we've seen there, uh, like S and P 500. One-year volatility, for example, uh, historic one-year volatility hit like the lowest levels in like forever. And when I say forever, I mean literally. Uh, so uh, we've got this really massive compression in volatility, and I think that that bodes well. Uh, we've got to be patient, waiting for that volatility uptick. I know we're no longer talking about euro sterling, but I just wanted to talk about volatility for a second because. You know, there's a lot of things that I'm seeing that we're actually getting to like some pretty big extremes and across various markets. Even seen, I think it was in uh, fixed income volatility, has gone to like what you would call a generational low. Uh, we're seeing all kinds of things move to really, you know, just across broader markets, across all asset classes. We're seeing this really big compression. And I think that bodes really well because that means what, what usually comes after that is is a period of extended higher volatility. It doesn't mean, you know, for example, higher volatility in the stock market everybody associates with being a, a down market, which certainly can be the case. Uh, but like in, in the with like the stock market, you know, higher volatility could also just mean bigger price swings and we could still head higher. Uh, and FX. You know that certainly mean that higher volatility mean that we'll get more bigger, cleaner trends and whatnot. So the positive is I think that 2018 uh, is going to hold better trading opportunities than uh, than we what we've seen this year. And, and there have been some decent opportunities, just haven't been uh, as ample as maybe we'd like them to be. And maybe I'll do a webinar one day talking and showing some of those those charts that I've been looking at with volatility and their extremes and and why you should be upbeat for next year. Uh, let's see. Let's okay. Now let's get back to actually uh, talking about some currencies. Uh, this continues to be one that that is doing nothing, but while it's doing nothing, I'm I'm uh, encouraged. Let's just say that I'm encouraged by the possibilities here with Euro Sterling. We've got this rectangular consolidation going nowhere, range bound. Now, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm I like this is I don't like it right now to do anything because I mean we're literally in the middle of the range, right? So what do you do? You flip a quarter, and you, you get long, you get short. The only the only people winning right now are the volatility sellers. Uh, so, with that said, we've got really good support down here. I would ideally like to see it break support because it has proven that this area down here, right, this 132 uh, down to say 131.40, if this were a break, I think this would would be fairly substantial. Uh, we could see a nice nice sell off there. Uh, but even if we just consolidate here and we break out. 
uh, above these highs, that could lead to a nice continuation trade. Either way, at some point, this is bound to make a good move. I just like that the fact that there's a lot of support here, and it just keeps getting hit, hit, hit. And so I think that if it broke, it would probably lead to a pretty, pretty good move. Uh, and the, and given that we're seeing dollar yen start to roll downhill a little bit, uh, that could certainly become the case soon. Um, hey, Robbie, there you are. You were you were hiding in the bushes. <laughs> uh, which is a good way to which is a good way to approach the market, right? You know that you've been around a long time. Hide in the bushes and wait for your opportunity. Sometimes they you sit in those bushes for a very long time. Uh, but that's a good thing, though. At least you won't, you're not losing money in those cases, right? Trade like a tiger. Uh, Sterling Yen. Sterling Yen continues to have some good support at this slope here. Uh, you've got this low down here, low, low, low resistance, very close to it now. If I want to tweak my trend line a little bit, you could actually include the recent lows. But point is, is that the, the Sterling Yen is one of those where you know, I don't really know. I don't really know what to make of this right at this moment. Uh, maybe it's maybe it's a big old triangle forming. Uh, we do have a lot of support between that slope and horizontal uh, levels, right? So we got a lot of support here in sterling in. So I'm I'm thinking, you know, I'm still thinking that maybe it it, it could break it, but I want to see it break it first. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna try to predict that one. Uh, Aussie yen is just getting murdered. Uh, that's that's kind of putting it nicely. Uh, if you looked at Aussie Yen in a bubble by itself, and uh, you might think that the stock market is getting hit pretty good. And, and while we have seen actually some pretty good moves to the downside in, say, uh, European indices and, and the Nikkei, the old stubborn U.S. markets are not uh, not cooperating with uh, the downside. Uh, and so we've got Aussie Yen making, uh, yeah, you're right, and Robbie. It, it, it's Euro Aussie is also making a risk off type move. And if you look at dollar yen, even dollar yen right now, you know, if you're looking at that thing, and you're seeing the yen strength in general, like this is we were talking about the other day. This is a very, very good risk proxy, uh, or has been historically. Uh, but it's it's in the process of breaking some key trend lines. This, these could be warning signs that maybe we're going to see some weakness in equities. I, it's very hard to be bearish at this time of the year. Uh, even even during times when the market is, and I've looked at this before, even during times when the market's been rough, uh, the end of the year doesn't <clears throat> oftentimes bring a, a whole amount, a whole lot of selling in equities. So maybe it'll be a January thing, and I wouldn't mind that keeping the market propped up in the January, and then. And then have a, a smackdown. January can be a pretty good month of trading. A lot of volatility. New year, new money, etc. Anyways, trend line uh, right here. This one's already this already has been put to sleep, put to bed. This one here, we got a lot of lows. It's in the process of breaking, uh, making the and then we also got a low below this the swing low here. Uh, it, as long as it doesn't close back up above, we don't have some nasty uh, key reversal day. You know, this this to me is in trouble. Uh, continues to roll downhill, and, and we do have some support over here. Uh, but eh, I'm not really. I'm thinking that you know with the break of these trend lines, the breakdown lower low here, uh, Aussie yen could continue to get uh, uglier and uglier. And Kiwi yen getting uh, getting pretty wrecked. Uh, after having a retest of a broken trend line, um, old support became new resistance, new low. Uh, this down here is probably the next spot to, to look for maybe uh, this thing to, to pause, uh, if not bounce, around 7563. Uh, looking at Swiss yen, Swiss yen is, is very close to uh, this trend line coming back here. So we've got some. You know, these trend lines back from September of 2016, 
Uh, we do have some horizontal support not far below that trend line, uh, but the general structure here is not not good. So you know we are kind of setting up for some of these things. Uh, the yen the yen is showing uh, it's starting to flex its muscles a little bit here. Uh, and that could be it could be an indication of something to come in uh, in the equity markets perhaps. Uh, this was one that we CAD yen. CAD yen failing the uh, <laughs> the macro inverse head and shoulders. Not uh, you know again all these things are kind of starting to roll downhill a little bit. Uh, this one though I'm I'm still avoiding. Uh, in general I'm just avoiding it. Uh, I really don't. This one I mean, we've got a downtrend going on here. I think some of these other ones though are are more attractive. Now getting to that Euro Aussie. Euro Aussie is is really uh, really taken off here, uh, and trying its best now to to get itself into some open space. Uh, we're right at this high, this spike high here. Uh, we had that little uh, hesitation, a little pause uh, that lasted about a day and a half, and now now Euro Aussie's back at it. Uh, it's not one that I want to get in front of, not necessarily one that I want to chase, but if I had a good, if I had a good price in this one, uh, maybe maybe want to let it breathe a little bit. Uh, looking at Euro Kiwi breaking above these highs over here, we're getting up close to uh, some slope resistance. But you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't bank on this being uh, the most steadfast form of resistance. But it it could turn into something. Uh, if we when we had this line over here, uh, we got a nice retracement. But that was of also in confluence with uh, these levels over here. So I would say that the likelihood of, of seeing this kind of retracement off of this upper parallel is, has diminished. And in fact, if we did get a retracement, we would look to uh, uh, this as, as a possible source of support around the 170-230 area. And maybe that would offer a, a uh, continuation style trade. Uh, Sterling Aussie uh, also starting to join in on the party. Uh, we've got this trend line. I'm going to clean it up here a little bit. I'm going to make it as conservative as possible. We're, con we're connecting all these uh, highs in here. So we got the high, I'm including this one, and then the highest point there. This gives you the most conservative trend line. We're right there right now. Uh, this This overall kind of looks like it, you know, and you're looking at this this wedging sequence here. Uh, it's starting to look like maybe it wants to wants to really try to pop higher, uh, but we do need we really need to get up here uh, before we're in open space uh, and get above all these highs. But if we do, there's not a lot going on it's for for quite a good distance. So the bias would then become to look to uh, to to set up some of the shorter term time frame from the long side. Uh, it almost seems as if some of these things want to. So we've got Brexit over here. They almost seem like they want to get back to to Brexit levels at some point. Uh, kind of erase Brexit, if you will. Uh, Sterling Kiwi, kind of like Euro Kiwi. It's got a uh, upper upper uh, parallel here. Uh, again, not viewing it as the most steadfast form of resistance. Uh, and it does have a little room to go, right? We got a little room to go there before we get there. And then again, you know, this one even more so than uh, than the case with Sterling Aussie is it's 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 well above these resistance points, which were the equivalents of those ones that we were just looking at in uh, in Sterling Aussie. Uh, again, you know, there's a lot of room to go if if this is going to erase Brexit, and we're in that area. You can almost look at this as a gap. And, and it kind of looked like that over here, uh, and then we had a big thorough retest of, of this zone down here in the 188s, very thorough uh, retest, uh, almost too much for my uh, for my likings. Uh, but anyways, we're you know we're obviously trending higher here, and I think that there is a possibility uh, these these cross rates can be pretty wobbly at times. So you know chasing them can uh, you know they can certainly you know, you can pay up and certainly get paid, uh, but I still take a, uh, a pullback approach to these. So we'll see how things play out if we get up to this upper parallel. Maybe we'll get back to this old high and then kind of jab and go. 
so that's that's something we can watch for next week. Uh, dollar max. We'll just touch on this real quick. Update uh, the ascending wedge here is coming under fire. Uh, we're kind of at the bottom of it now. It needs to turn up, or this thing's going to turn down. Uh, but we certainly have some resistance here, and this is we reversed off this. November 2015 trend line, so it's possible that we're we're about to see a, a down move here. I'd like to see one more little push and then and then roll over. Uh, if this is going to fail, uh, if these higher highs or higher lows, I should say, are going to uh, um, let's take a look at gold real quick. Gold still uh, coiling up nearing the apex, still coiling, waiting for this thing uh, to do something. Um, I, I like the silver pattern better. I like the silver pattern better. It's it's tighter. We're, we're certainly getting to a point here where uh, we should start to make a move. Uh, we discussed this one yesterday uh, when we talked about chart patterns. Uh, this one is, is, is coiling up nicely. Uh, waiting for it to either break the underside of the pattern along with this trend line uh, or break out to the top side and squeeze up. Uh, it, seemed, it would seem, and I italicize seem and put it in quotation marks, that these things could break to the top side with dollar weakness. If dollar weakness becomes uh, very pervasive, uh, but you know, I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna go with the the pattern break and and then worry about the dollar and its its own right. Uh, oil, oil is finding some support here. So the other day, I didn't really like. I didn't like seeing this this hard sell off into support. It it, it sets up the it, it, when you see hard sell offs, it increases the probability that it's not going to hold. Uh, so far, it's holding though. Uh, to me, right here, you kind of got, you know, you've got some some resistance. Uh, it goes back to the low of this consolidation. Got to go all the way back to 2015. We can see a nice reversal bar. We've got support, so we've got uh, we've got some levels there, top and bottom side that are starting to edge themselves out. Uh, looking at the Nikkei, let's look at the Nikkei real quick. Get to the indices. The Nikkei. This was a this was a pretty uh, Pretty sick reversal day. Uh, this 22,750 that we actually turned lower from today. My lord, I got to go back. It's drawn in there for a reason. It's a 1996 high. It's a 1996 high. Sometimes it's it, you can see these levels uh, come into play uh, years and years later. And the high was 22.757. Could be a coincidence, maybe not. Uh, this, this to me, you know, either the the best case right now for for the Nikkei to me is that it it chops sideways. I think that there's still a possibility that we see some more weakness out of the Nikkei, uh, and that this was a a pretty significant uh, event here. We had this like 20% run up, and then this really Nasty candlestick there, right? Had kind of a spinning top, doji, long-legged doji, whatever you want to call it. Anytime you get really volatile price action like that, it's it, 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 it makes you sit up and take notice. Uh, and so I think that best case is that the Nikkei kind of chops around a little bit. I don't foresee it having a strong momentum move to the upside. Uh, if anything, I could see another leg lower coming. Uh, but not really too focused on that. Now, the other day when we were looking at the DAX, it was trading down like this, and then and we held this this old high, this support area with a nice little reversal, got the little bounce. Got the little bounce. Uh, we're trading around these these long-term slopes. Uh, clearly, it was a, a problem over here uh, before breaking out. So this is important. If the if the DAX wants to continue to go higher, it's going to need to it's going to need to push on through there. Uh, if it doesn't, and we start to get a rollover, we do get a close down here below all these levels. Uh, I, you know, I wouldn't even necessarily need a close below this day low, but if we just got even a close down here below, say 12,900, then I think that that would set into motion another another leg lower. 
uh, the FTSE the FTSE continues to uh, to act very weak. Uh, sterling rallying is not helping the FTSE. The FTSE 100 especially, which is what we're looking at, given the 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 fact that the uh, the index consists of primarily multinational companies who make their money outside of the UK. So a strong sterling uh, is is it, it dampens. Uh, it dampens repatriated profits, uh, whereas a weak sterling boosts them. Uh, so you, you've, you've kind of got a little bit of a twofold situation here, uh, and that that's the same thing you could say with the DAX too, right? If the euro really starts to rally, uh, then you're going to see pressure on the DAX. But same kind of thing applies here with the FTSE, uh, and I still think that the FTSE is 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 at risk of dropping down into the support zone. Uh, around 7315, 7290. Uh, let's look at the S&P. The S&P is a choppy, sloppy mess. Hasn't gone anywhere in a while. Uh, choppiness may continue before we get some clarity. The only thing I am looking at right now, well, we have this. Sorry, we have this rising wedge. It's still in play, uh, but it's it's not. It's it's. We we had a close below this June slope that we had held, 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 and then now we're back above it. It's very sloppy in there. Uh, the Dow is actually, you know, it's got one possibility, uh, and I'm not, you know, I'm not super confident on it. I'm just kind of pointing it out. I'll be confident on it if it breaks the neckline. But you know we are seeing we are seeing some other markets that are pretty weak, and you think at some point maybe the uh, U.S. markets would cooperate to the downside uh, has not been the case. Uh, but we do have a possible uh, head and shoulders top here after this wedge break. Uh, but it could just become a range too. Uh, I'm not worried about whether it works or not because that's really the point that it needs to get to anyways uh, to validate it. So I'm not. I'm not worried that if it doesn't work because there's we have no validation yet. There's probably not a great reason to be in a in an, an ultra short position, uh, which has been the case with these things, right? This could just e just as easily turn into another consolidation period. Uh, it is a bull market, and we are moving sideways. Uh, you know, I, I still think that there's the possibility that we do get some weakness here, uh, and then and then maybe a, a, a final, uh, maybe a little Santa Claus rally or something of that nature. Robbie says, "What do you make of these risk pairs moving a lot in the ind in indices or bonds not showing the risk? Any opinion on that?" Um, yeah, as I was saying earlier, you know, like with Aussie yen, you know, and just yen in general, I've seen a lot of yen, uh, a lot of yen strength. Uh, which is, you know, and then and then as we were just looking at Euro Aussie, uh, which is another one. Uh, it, it, they, they certainly they certainly paint a different picture than what you're seeing. Uh, it could just simply be a fracturing. Uh, I try not to get, you know, I, again, I it, I look at cross market relationships, but I don't get, you know, I like to look at things in a bubble. It's just like gold and silver and the dollar. You know, I, I don't want to overanalyze the dollar and what it's doing and how it's going to impact gold and silver because the relationship can turn on and off. Again, like I said earlier with Aussie yen, if you if you had just shown me this chart and you know, from from here until now, I'd been on a two month vacation and you showed me Aussie yen doing this, I'd probably tell you that the S and P uh, had come off a little bit, uh, which it really hasn't. Uh, and, and well, actually, from this point. From September, uh, has it not only not come off? Uh, it's actually higher. So, yeah, we're we're seeing some divergence there. It could be a a macro thing here. Uh, they oftentimes say that stocks are the last to know. Uh, that the FX traders and and the interest rate traders are are more of. A, but you mentioned there, you know, bonds not really showing the same response. Um, but you know what? Bonds in the stock market have been in a you know they've been in uh, well the bond market in the U.S. has been a bull market for what like like a thousand years. 
<laughs> I think it's been in a bull market since since pretty much like since I was in diapers. I mean, it's like a long, long, long time. It's been like a generational uh, rally. So, and stocks have also uh, been in a, in a in a bull market for the most part during that time as well. So, maybe maybe uh, maybe we'll have a uh, bond market. A bond market, stock market sell-off, and there, and that—that that, I tell you—that would do a lot to some uh, 60, 40 portfolios, wouldn't it? <laughs> so much for diversification. That's getting very macro, though. That's that's, but I do think that's a very distinct possibility is that we have a, we have a bond market, stock market sell-off at some point, and uh, that's going to leave a lot of people hurting. And uh, and and given that that the bond market has basically gone up for a full generation and then some. Uh, it would leave a lot of people scratching their heads. Kind of reminds me of how like the housing market could never go down, and then all of a sudden, 2007, 2008 happened, and it did. Uh, it seems like you know it takes a full generation of of uh, a cycle. Uh, people forget, they lose sight. Things are different. I think we could get. Uh, I think that would be something that would certainly take the uh, the baby boomers by surprise. Uh, is that you, you got a, you know, they're all filing out of stocks uh, into the bond market, and then all of a sudden the bond market uh, gets smoked too, and, and nobody would quite understand that because because bonds don't bonds don't hurt you, uh, but they certainly can if they depreciate at a much faster rate than the uh, the rate that they're paying uh, goes. So that's a not to go off on a tangent there, uh, but I could certainly see that happening. You know, and and it would be uh, it'd be a painful experience uh, if you're not positioned correctly. All right, that's it, guys. I'm gonna jump off the mic. Um, thanks for your time, uh, your uh, your questions, and we'll be back next week. You know, we were actually we I started a half an hour early today. I, it was there was some kind of little boo boo I think in the scheduling. It happens normally. It's normally it's a 10:30 GMT. Uh, anyways, uh, next week we'll be back on on Tuesday. Uh, yes, Leo, I am on YouTube, and uh, you will find this on the YouTube channel, the Daily FX YouTube channel. Um, you can also find it under. You'll find a archived version of this with some text in it under my uh, author name and on my Twitter handle, which is at Paul Robinson uh, FX. So it's 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 at my name and then FX. All right, guys, have a good weekend, and I'll talk to you guys on Tuesday. Thank you very much.